Okay, Proverbs chapter 18. Uh, Second Chronicles 18. I don't know why it says Proverbs. Second Chronicles 18. And this is going to be a chapter we're going to break in half. Now Jehoshaphat had riches and honor in abundance. He's had peace with God. He's serving the Lord. And joined affirmity. That's a relationship by marriage. With Ahab, Israel, a king who's following wicked ways. Jehoshaphat, who has done right, is married into a family that doesn't do right. And that's trouble. And if Jehoshaphat would look back into his own family of David, of Solomon, and more so for great-great-grandpa Solomon marrying wives that he should not have married. And yet, Jehoshaphat marries a Jew, uh, marries into a the Jewish family, Asa, I mean Ahab, excuse me. But the law prescribed for the Jews to marry in their tribes. Benjamin to marry Benjamin, Judah to marry Judah, Levi to marry Levi, Naphtali to, to marry to Naphtali. And here we have a nation split. We got North Israel. We got South Judah. Israel never does right. Judah, they do right. They do wrong. They do right. They do right. They do wrong. They do wrong. They do wrong. They do right. And Jehoshaphat, in verse in chapter 17, is doing right. And then he steps off and does wrong. And... You go back in 1 Kings 22 to read this, and you can go back to our videos or our audio on 1 Kings 22 as we looked at this. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. That's the capital of Israel. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance. And for the people that had that he had with him and persuade him to go up with him to Ramoth Gilead. So these animals are slaughtered. He wants to go into battle. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, look where the Holy Spirit is. There's this division. And there is a division. Judah and Israel. Israel doesn't do right. Judah does right. Will thou go with me to Ramoth Gilead? And he, which would be Jehoshaphat, answered him, Ahab, I am as thou art. No, you're not. You're right with God. You are right with God. And Ahab is not right with God. My people as thy people. No, your people were just serving the Lord in peace and doing right. The people of Israel. There were people in Israel who left Israel, came to Jerusalem to do right. The people in Israel now, he's talking about those who stayed and those that are worshiping the golden calf and doing whatever they want to do. People in Judah right now, what Jehoshaphat has done, they're serving the Lord. And under Asa, part of his reign, they're serving the Lord. Israel, they're not serving the Lord. What a statement. And we will be with thee in the war. So going to Raymond Gilead is a war. It's a declaration of war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. All right? I will go with you. I will be as your people. Your people be as my people. I am with you. You're with me. But first... The rightness of Jehoshaphat. Let's ask God. Let's see what God has to say about it first. So Jehoshaphat is doing right. And he's doing wrong. And we do that in our Christian life. We do right and then we do wrong. We do wrong then we do right. Or up and down. Or like that heart monitor in the hospital. Neat, 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 neat. And we stand in Christ. We are firm and settled and forever to be saved in Christ. 
but our state. We go from Florida to Texas to Wyoming to Oklahoma to California to Connecticut to Maine to Alaska to Hawaii. The state we're in is different always. Today I'm doing right in the Lord. Tomorrow, who knows? This hour I did something for the Lord. The next hour I've sinned. This hour I've done something for the Lord and I've sinned. An hour ago I, I did something for the Lord, then I sinned. Then I sinned and I did something for the Lord. Oh, I'm just completely in the flesh today. Oh, I'm completely in the Lord. And we're wishy-washy. Jehoshaphat should have, before he said, Hey, I'm with you and you're with me, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to ask God first. But he's already made the alliance. What's God going to tell Jehoshaphat? He's already made the alliance. Had Jehoshaphat asked God before verse 3, God would say, you don't need to be here. But since you open up your big mouth, since you have sworn by your mouth, and Solomon says, it better be silent than open your mouth. Every idle word, Jesus said, man shall be held account. It's better for you not to swear than to swear and not do what you swore. Verse 5, therefore, the king of Israel, who's doing wrong, Who's wicked gathered together of prophets 400 men we'll worry about them in a moment and said unto them shall we go up to Ramah Gilead to battle war or shall we forbear Jehoshaphat says let's ask the Lord capital L capital O capital R capital D King Ahab who's not right with the Lord calls 400 prophets yeah watch and they the prophets Go up, go up, go. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. For God will deliver it into the king's hand. That's a lie. By what we're going to be reading and finish our reading, Lord willing, that statement by those prophets are a lie and it's a false prophet's. Jehoshaphat says, I want a prophet from the Lord. I want to know. And Ahab gives him false prophets, 400. Verse 9. That's 6. Excuse me. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we may inquire of him? Jehoshaphat knows better. Why is he even still there? He ought to know by now. Those prophets are liars. They're false prophets. They're not anything of God. He should just got his clothes and his baggage and headed home. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may acquire of the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But I hate him. Now, that's a particular great statement by a man who's not doing right with God. There is one man who I can do what you want, Jehoshaphat. I just had 400 men say, how great thou art to the king. But that's not good enough for you, Jehoshaphat. But there is one man who say, how great God is. And I hate him. Wouldn't you think Jehoshaphat be kicking the sand right now saying, there's something screwy going on here. This guy knows someone's going to speak for God and he hates him. I am in the wrong company. For he never prophesies good unto me. So he wants a positive well-being message. But always evil. So I don't get a positive message from this guy. He's always shooting me down. The same is Micaiah, the son of Imla. And many preachers have preached about Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king so. Jehoshaphat tells, king, hush. Quiet. I don't want to hear you complaining. Go get the man. Why is Jehoshaphat still here? 
and the king of Israel, and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne. Sat either of them on his throne. There's one throne and both of them seated. That's kind of interesting. They're both in unity of the kingdom. Clothed in their robes, royalty. And they sat in a void place at the entering of the gate of Samaria. So here, the gate of Samaria, here's this little spot that's it's nothing. It has no purpose, but there is the throne. And here is these two kings dressed in royalty. So everybody coming in and out would see them. And all the prophets, the 400, prophesied before them. You're doing good. You're great at job. How wonderful you are. Oh, just go do it. God's on your side. God loves you. Under your throne seat, you'll find $5 if you sit on the right throne seat. Can we sing Kumbaya? How great thou art. And they're not singing to God. They're not preaching negative because the king already said, I don't want that negative preaching. I hate Micaiah because he preaches against me. So these prophets that are love are preaching wonderful, great, healthy things. Man, you don't want a doctor like that. You don't want a doctor after you've had medical tests. And you sit down at his desk in a chair. And he's over there and he's looking through your papers and saying, you're just so great. You're just so wonderful. You've got such a marvelous body. Oh, just how great it is. I wish I had a body like that. And he's looking at the reports of labs. He's looking at the x-ray saying, you got a cancer. You got a cyst. You got a tumor. You got a gangrene. You got something. But he's not telling you the truth. My wife had something like that, and she said it was almost near death. Had not a doctor come in and step the truth. Almost like the story here. And Zedekiah, the son of Chenaniah, had made him horns of iron. Your iron horns. I don't know how, I mean, this says iron horns. And he said, thus saith the Lord, a lie. There are men who will say, thus saith the Lord, from 897 B.C. to 2019 A.D. We have learned through this chapter that not all men that say, thus saith the Lord, are telling you the truth. When Jacob is st sitting or standing or kneeling before Isaac, his father, and his father says, son, how did you get that medicine so quick? Jacob said, well, the Lord blessed my outing and gave me great deliverance to get you this food. No, you didn't. Your mother got it for you. And we got to come to the reality because a prophet says, thus saith the Lord, we've got to study the scriptures. We've got to study to show thyself approved on the God of workmen that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, Ahab doesn't have that. We do. Ahab is going to be put to great shame. How? He's going to die in battle. And he's going to wake up in hell. Because he listened to lying preachers, lying prophets. And you say, well, how do I know the people that come to my door, they're, they're lying to me? Check it out with the scriptures. How do I know that this event in my religion is wrong? When, I, when the Bible says before the law, during the law, and after the law, the eating of blood is forbidden, even amongst Christians. That would give you a good idea. It's wrong. Paul tells the Corinthian church, no marvel for Satan himself is transformed as, a, as an angel of light, and no marvel if his ministers. You can't believe everybody in the pulpit, and don't you even think every preacher, pastor, teacher, evangelist, 
anybody in the works of man. Don't you think they're all going to be in heaven one day? Many will be in hell. He said, Thus saith the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. Now these iron, these 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 iron horns, I can only think, and I don't know. I'm giving it was, maybe they're like the Viking hats. Here are these horns. He put them on his head or something. I don't know what he's got in his hand. He says, "With these horns, you're going to drive away an entire nation called the Syrians." So that's wrong. And we'll see that in our later study of this chapter, Lord willing. I hope the Lord comes before we finish. I would love to have the Lord finish during, in the middle of this chapter and take us home. And all the prophets, so the 399, all the prophets prophesied saying, go up the river Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. Follow the leader. One guy says something, then all the guys get in behind him and start repeating. Zedekiah said, with these you should win. Said, yeah, with these you should win. With these you're going to win. Ah. And they're all lying. These, now that one man stood up and said, with these are in order, and now the 399... They're all going to kill the king. These false prophets, the 400 of them, are going to stand before God one day and say, Why did you kill King Ahab? Why didn't you kill him? He died in battle. You sent them in that battle. You said I said. I didn't say nothing. These prophets are going to be charged with murder. Now, what do you do with ministers, preachers, reverends, rabbis, evangelists, missionaries? And I'm forgetting any. I'm sorry if I forget any. What do you get if any of these ministers preach the wrong gospel, preach the wrong way, and elaborate themselves in religion, and the people die thinking they're okay, and they go off into hell forever, into the lake of fire that burns forever? God is going to charge those people. with the fault of the people they led. That's a serious charge. I had a guy ask me the other day, great, great question. Is there different degrees in hell? Yes, there is. The Bible speaks about the lowest hell. And I believe by the scriptures that a man that deceives another man is going to get the deepest and worst hell. Jesus said, if you take a little child and you offend that little child, it is better for a millstone to be hanged about your head and cast into the outer deeps. You die early. And you'll be judged by God. Don't you worry about religion. God will deal with the people that are in that religion that deceive the people. And they'll get a greater. Now that person's fault too. Because they should read the Bible. People in religion. People without religion. People in church. People who are not in church. They have the same Bible I have. They can get it online. And they can read the same thing I read. And they can be saved by the same way I'm saved. Only by Jesus Christ. That study to show thyself approved unto God is written to all men. Saved or lost. Ashamed. You can be ashamed when you go into the lake of fire and it burns forever. You can be ashamed when you end up at the judgment seat of Christ and you taught wrong and you suffer a loss. That's a shame. And we'll finish the rest of the chapter, Lord willing. 